Yum yum! This is Ed Ferrari, and in this video I'm going to make a waffle. Now the reason I'm going to make a waffle is because it's a simple way to demonstrate a great new feature of Mesh Fusion that was introduced in Moto 10.2. And that new feature is known as the Compound Trim. A Compound Trim allows us to trim or subtract one Fusion item from another Fusion item. And this wasn't possible in previous iterations of Mesh Fusion. Of course, we could achieve similar results previously by creating a complex fusion setup in the schematic, but the compound trim feature allows us to perform such tasks faster and in a more straightforward manner. So I'm going to delete this waffle, and we're going to create it again with the three mesh items in the item list. So the first mesh item is named waffle underscore base, and this is going to be the main body of the waffle. The second mesh item is called grid, and this is going to give us the square indentations or that signature waffle pattern in our waffle. You can think of this as kind of like the waffle iron that influences the shape of the waffle base. The other mesh item is called cookie cutter, and this is just going to be a subtractive element that gives the grid its circular shape, because as you can see, the grid at the moment is pretty square. So we're going to use these three mesh items to create two fusion items, and then we're going to subtract one of those fusion items from the other using compound trim. So I'm going to create a new fusion item. Uh, it's going to be derived from this waffle base. So I'm just going to select it in item mode. And there's three ways to create a new fusion item. Uh, the first is this icon right here in the fusion V tab. It's the first icon in the first row. It's set mesh roll to primary. If I click that, you'll notice that we have a fusion item in the item list, and it's turned our uh, mesh item, waffle underscore base, to a primary uh, fusion source mesh item. If I hold com uh, command or control Z to undo that, we can also uh, select this mesh item and hold control F to bring up the fusion pie menu, and I can choose the top option, which is new fusion. That brings up a popover for a new fusion, and I can name the new fusion, so we'll call this fuse underscore waffle, and I can click new fusion with selected meshes, and that also creates a new fusion item, and it makes our mesh item into a primary fusion source item. So again, I'll control or command Z to undo that. And the last way to create a primary is to select the mesh item and then come over to the topmost button, which is New Fusion in the Fusion V tab. And I'll click that, and that will bring up this uh, familiar popover. And I'm going to name it Fuse underscore Waffle and click New Fusion with selected meshes. So it's just three ways to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to come over to the Fusion item, and in the Fusion properties, I'm going to change the mesh mode from Draft to Airtight Final, just so it's airtight. And then I'm going to drag the Fusion item so that it's beneath its uh, corresponding uh, primary fusion source. Now, the primary is highlighted in green, and if I hide the fusion item, we can see that green color matches the green wireframe in the viewport. The other two uh, fusion operations, other than uh, primary, are both trims. There's a trim subtractive and a trim intersection. The trim subtractive uh, will be, uh, it'll have a magenta wireframe, and the trim intersect will have a purple wireframe. The subtractive and intersect uh, fusion operations both trim or take away from the primary. And as I mentioned, the primary is additive or positive, and that's why we see it right here. So now I'm going to create another fusion item with the two remaining uh, mesh items. So I'm going to take this grid, and in item mode, I'm going to click on New Fusion, and I'll call this one Fuse underscore Grid, and I'll click New Fusion with selected meshes. So now this is another primary, but I'm actually going to subtract the cookie cutter from this primary. So I'll make the cookie cutter visible, and the easiest way to subtract this cookie cutter from this grid is to select the cookie cutter uh, in item mode and drag it onto the grid primary until we see this pop over here. I'm going to come down to Fusion, Apply Subtraction, and let go of my left mouse button. And that will 
simultaneously set this cookie cutter mesh item to be a uh, trim subtractive, and it will also apply it to the fusion. So if I hold Control F to bring up my Fusion Pi menu and select this rightmost option, which is toggle source visibility, we can temporarily disable the visibility of those uh, Fusion source wireframes just so we can get a good look at this Fusion item. So as you can see, the grid is now circular towards the bottom. I'm going to uh, select this second Fusion item, and just like I did with the first, I'm going to come down to the properties, and where it says Mesh Mode Draft, I'm just going to change that to Airtight Final. Now I'm going to enable the visibility of the first Fusion item, and basically what we're going to do is subtract this uh, one Fusion item from the bottom Fusion item. So. In order to do that, I need to change this bottom fusion item, item into a compound trim. So in order to do that, I need to select all of the fusion source meshes associated with the second fusion item. And I'm going to come over to the Fusion V tab, and where it says Compound Trims, this first icon will convert the current fusion item into a compound trim. Now, I want you to keep an eye on the item list. What's going to happen when I click this compound trim button is the fusion item is going to turn into a locator, but it's a special kind of locator. Uh, it's a compound trim locator, and both of these fusion items are going to be parented to that locator. So I'm going to click this button, compound trim, and straight away you can see our locator, it almost resembles more of a bounding box. And if I uh, expose the child items and make them visible, you can see it really is a, a bounding box that fits around uh, the fusion source items. So now if I want to subtract the contents of this compound trim from the first fusion item, which is the fuse waffle, I can make the primary fusion item visible. And I'm going to select the locator from the compound trim, shift select the waffle base, which is the primary, and then I'm just going to perform a simple uh, subtractive trim operation. I'm going to come over to Set Mesh Roll and Apply, and this first icon in the second row is uh, subtractive. If I click that, our uh, grid pattern should uh, be subtracted from the waffle. And there it is. So if I hide all of the fusion source wireframes and we look at this, it looks pretty good. The border matches the width of the uh, space between uh, the square indentations, which is nice. Uh, one thing that's not so nice is that uh, the bottom doesn't have the grid. So there's a few ways we can fix this. One way would be to uh, make the grid visible and then select it and select all of the polygons. And with an origin action center, we can hold Shift V and mirror this in the Y so that we have a kind of a mirrored version of this grid cutting away. But this is also a really good opportunity to show a couple new features in 10.2. So I'm not going to do that method. I'm going to actually hide everything and so that I'm looking at a blank viewport. I'm going to press N to create a new mesh item and I'm going to name this waffle underscore merge. And then uh, in this empty mesh item I'm going to come over to the mesh operation tab, and in the procedural stack, I'm going to add an operator within this empty mesh item, and I'm going to add a merge meshes mesh operation. Now the merge meshes mesh operation was introduced in Moto 10.1, but we weren't able to use live fusion items as a source to the merge meshes until 10.2, so that's a new feature. If I expose the sources and click add sources, I can choose fuse underscore waffle as our source. And now we have uh, the live fusion item as our source. And what that means is we can add further uh, mesh operations on top of this merge meshes uh, mesh up. But if we return to the fuse, uh, the fusion item and adjust things like the strip width or strip profile, or if we change the size of uh, some of the fusion source items, everything will update. So it's, it's procedural on top of being procedural. 
But what we really want to do is just address this uh, bottom part, which is flat. So I'm going to use a new mesh app that was introduced in 10.2 called Symmetrize. So I'll double click Symmetrize. And it looks like nothing happened, but in the Symmetrize uh, properties, I can change the axis to Y. And once I do that, we have the grid on the top and bottom. If you don't see anything happening, or if you lose your grid completely, it might be because of the direction. It's just good to uh, try and observe if anything's wrong, and if it is, uh, you can change negative to positive to positive to negative, or vice versa. So now I think it's a good idea to add a bend, just to give this a little bit of life, because at the moment it's kind of flat. So I'm going to add a bend effector above the symmetrize. So I'll come to Add Operator, and I'll type in Bend, and double click Bend Effector. Going to come in pretty big, so I'm going to change the uh, length of the bend effector to maybe 165 millimeters, and then I'll change the axis to X. I'll press W for move, and I'll just move this so that the length of the bend effector kind of fits the waffle better. And then I'll choose angle, and I'm in items mode, so if I press C, I'll bring up the channel hall. And now I can just change the angle just to give it a bend. That's probably way too much, but that's okay. Uh, now I can come up to the uh, topmost uh, operation in the procedural stack, and I can just right-click it, and that's the bend, and I'll just freeze that. And by freezing the topmost uh, operation, it freezes everything. So now, I don't even need the bend effector because that effect is baked into the geometry, so I can just get rid of that bend effector. Uh, I can select this uh, mesh item. I can press M for material. And I'll just give this a new material. Oh, I almost <laughs> spilled out material. I should call this waffle underscore zero two. And I'll just give this a color. The color is pretty arbitrary, but I'll try to get a orange beige kind of waffle color. I don't know why I said orange. But you probably shouldn't eat an orange waffle. Okay, so that's close enough. Now I'm going to come over to the Layout uh, tab, and we have our Material Preset Browser here. I'm just going to come over to the Laminates, and even though this is going to look a little bit plasticky, I like this one color, and I just like the way this looks. Uh, it's kind of a, this kind of looks like a toy waffle uh, when we render it, but that's okay. I'll come over to the Render tab, and I'll click the triangle to start a preview render. And I'll just center this and try and let it bake. So ultimately, the idea wasn't to really show how to create a waffle. Uh, I really wanted to showcase the compound trim, which is super useful. Um, it could be used for so many different things. Uh, this could be the tread of a, a sneaker. Uh, it could be, you know, some sort of... Uh, part of a sci-fi prop, you know, uh, I would really, I would highly recommend exploring the compound trim. It's really powerful. I'm probably going to revisit it in, uh, in the next video because there's so much that you can do with it. So I hope this has been helpful. I really want to thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Yum, yum!